Now, Milo, uh, how have you managed to outrage feminists, uh, Black Lives Matter and the left to the point where there have been so many demonstrations to shut down your lecture tour? Give us a, a, a quick cook's tour of your outrage. Well, I just try to use common sense. I mean, I don't go out of my way to be unreasonable. Sometimes I go out of my way to be funny, which, of course, the left doesn't like very much. <laughs> what I try to do in my college tour and in my columns is merely to explain some facts, bring up some studies that present what we like to call inconvenient truths, not the Al Gore kind of inconvenient truth, but the inconvenient sort of truths, like, for example, there's no wage gap in most Western countries between what men and what women are paid. That's a myth. There's no campus rape crisis on American campuses. To believe that, you would have to believe believe the one in three, four, five statistics, that makes American college campuses more dangerous than the Congo, where rape is used as a weapon of war. The left expects us to believe a variety of completely insane things, uh, almost on pain of, of social expulsion, of excommunication from public life. Well, that always struck me as bizarre and unacceptable. So I've started a, a college tour, and in my columns for Breitbart, I try to explode some of these myths, and of course my, I am myself a myth to be exploded in some way. Uh, I'm a gay conservative, try to be a good Catholic, uh, but the left, of course, as you correctly suggest, doesn't like it very much when people who they thought they'd had sorted in one bucket turns out to be a bit more complex or to have more nuanced opinions than, than they would like. So it's, it's annoyed people quite a lot. It's really got some people's heckles up. I mean, feminists don't like the fact that they can't just call you a misogynist, woman-hating, sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic monster. It's obviously <laughs> not true in my case. You know, I'm just a, I'm just a normal guy with a job in journalism who doesn't, ex doesn't understand why people are forced to accept and to um, repeat lies to have a job in the public square. If you don't, for instance, pretend that you agree with the wage gap, which nobody really does, you'll lose your newspaper column. I've always found that ridiculous. So the gap between what we're forced to say and reality, to me, seems to be widening in the West as the left kind of gets a stranglehold on academia and the media and the entertainment industry. So I'm trying to, you know, bring things back to common sense. Well, it seems to me, in, in, in some parts, you're a, a walking contradiction of modern identity politics in two, two, two senses. One is, of course, the way you argue. You've, you've, you've argued, you've, you've challenged sort of preconceptions uh, with statistics, etc. Put that to one side. But you're also defined in part by the reaction to you because you are a category error. You don't fit the categorization that identity politics works on. You're not the gay victim yeah. that they want you to be and you, you, you're breaking the, the image. Is, would, would, am I right in this, assuming that? I think the Milo Yiannopoulos phenomenon, if you like, um, if I can say that, uh, it only strikes you as weird if you've internalized the fibs and the misrepresentations and the bigotries and assumptions of the left, which are that gay people have to believe a certain way. It strikes me that gays are actually natural libertarians. Of course, you know, the best of gay culture is about pushing the boundaries of what can be thought and said. The best dissident gay thinkers from the past, William S. Burroughs, Quentin Crisp, these have been natural libertarians, and they've had to fight against, in some cases, the conservative establishment to get, you know, the right to be who they are. But that simply isn't the case anymore. And if you think about the way in which the left actively works against gay people's interests, for example, by pandering to and sucking up to Islam, in particular radical Islam, uh, and you know, I, I'm, in, I'm in Los Angeles right now, and we've, I've been around the U.S. for the last nine months. I was in Orlando just after that, that horrible shooting happened. And the, to watch the left the gay left, the left establishment, make excuses for Islam, avoid using the word Muslims, avoid using the word Islamic, is terrifying because it robs gay people of the ability to defend themselves because they don't have information about what the risks are. And to, you know, to watch the left saying, oh, well, the way to solve this, the way to, you know, to fix the problem is gun-free zones, no. Gun-free zones are safe spaces for killers. And you make get gay people, and indeed everyone else, minorities and you, know, you, know, you name it, less safe when you deny them the right, the ability, and the education they need to protect themselves. The left, it seems to me, uh, is, is, is proselytizing in direct contradiction to gay people's interests. And perhaps that's why, at the last election in the UK, 50% uh, of gay men told pollsters they were going to vote conservative. That's our right-wing party. That horrified the left-wing press who, you know, came up with these editorials saying gay people are ungrateful and, you know, how could they after all the left has done for gays? Well, yeah, the left did do some stuff for gays, but now it's working against them. So don't be surprised if you're watching this and you're a, a liberal, by which, of course, I mean, you know, in the, in the American sense, a progressive, a social justice warrior, a left-winger, 
If you're watching this and you're thinking, what happened to gays? I thought we had them in the bag. Well, you stopped acting in our interests. And when you did that, you gave a sizable chunk of the, of the gay population, gay voters and, and gay thought and, 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 you know, all, and gay culture, ultimately, I think, over to other people. And gays, I think, are flocking, for example, to Donald Trump in the US, which the left doesn't understand at all. But of course, you know, not only is he a sort of camp icon, but he is also the greatest uh, threat to political correctness, which is in direct contradiction to, uh, to gay culture and to all the things that make being gay great. Uh, and they're flocking to other people. And, and as I say, in the UK, 50% of them are going to vote uh, voted conservative in the last election. Uh, I'm only a mystery to you if you have internalized things that the left have told you about homosexuals, which have simply never been true. Now, it's interesting. You, uh, you, you're spot on. The same phenomenon is here, despite people, you know, I've had them on my show, Tom McFeely, the owner of the best gay bar in uh, Melbourne, a conservative. Um, I'll give you, for instance, Australia's top gay lobby group has not issued a single media statement condemning the Islamic State for murdering gays, for instance. Mm -hmm. They'll complain about everything mm -hmm. else, but not the most direct mm -hmm. gay, uh, anti-gay hate crime uh, current at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was interesting to me, a, a, a politician I greatly admired, Pim Fortone, a Dutch politician who was gay himself and led a so-called right-wing party in Holland until the, a left-winger shot him, was saying that Islam, mm -hmm. he's opposed to Islam on the grounds that it encroaches on his freedom as a gay man. Uh, why have not? Yes. Th why have there not been more gay politicians and activists that have taken up this issue uh, until you? Gay politicians, the gay establishment generally, and gay charities in particular, are highly politicized, opportunistic liars. In my view, the gay, the, every gay charity in America should be shut down after what they did uh, following Orlando. You're absolutely right. Gay charities have d said nothing about the Islam problem because their primary purpose these days is not to look after the interests of gay people, because if it were, they would speak a lot more about HIV and a lot less about transgender pronouns, which affect nobody, and let's be honest, nobody really cares about, except as a sort of page seven oddity. Nobody cares about this, but people do care about exploding HIV infection rates, which are going back up. They also won't talk because they're cowards and bullies and just want to have a go at white people all the time. They won't talk about, for instance, the fact that 52% of African-American gay men will contract HIV at some point in their lives. Now, as somebody who dates black men, I'd quite like to know that, you know, and they should know that too so that they can look after themselves. But gay charities, oh, no, that's too difficult to talk about. Somebody might call us racist. This is the, uh, such a dereliction of the basic function of a gay charity and such a sort of disavowal of the essential purpose of the gay, gay establishment, if you like, the gay lobby in the first place, which is to look after gay people, that every charity after Orlando that did not come out with a firm and strong con uh, condemnation and you don't have to go as far as I do and say it's Islam. You could just say the Islamic State. Any charity that didn't come out with that deserves to be shut down. And that, by the way, is all of them. Well, can I just uh, go quickly through some other issues? And I, don't, I genuinely don't know your position mm -hmm. on some of these. I'm just interested in your sure. views as to these are stereotypical gay positions. Same-sex marriage. Uh, <laughs> it's homophobia if you oppose it. It's a big issue here in Australia. What's your opinion? On gay marriage, well, I don't think you can stop people who love each other from recognizing their union in an official capacity. And I, I don't think the state should, I've come round to agreeing, the state should provide some kind of mechanism for that to happen. My position, though, is I just wish gays wouldn't do it. Why? Well, some of the best things about being gay, some of the things that, that are responsible for homosexuals being vastly overrepresented in inventors, politicians, you know, almost every category of person that drives forward society and culture, gays are vastly overrepresented in that category. One of the reasons is they sort of have license to misbehave in a way that people with marriages and children responsibilities don't. I've seen over the last uh, 10 years, as I've been sort of active and professional and, uh, and an adult, but I've also you know, observed reading further back, in, you know, perhaps, to, perhaps 30 years, a sort of flattening and deadening of gay culture. Gay culture really now is incredibly dull and boring, has nothing to offer anybody. It's the same repetitive backslapping and sisterhood. Oh, you're so precious and brave and fabulous. In many cases, these people are not precious and brave and fabulous. They are self-serving, cynical, far-left, opportunistic thugs, bullies, and losers. And frankly, um, I would like to see gay people contribute again to culture in the way they used to, not just being sort of 
of lame fashion designers, but being artists, inventors, musicians, philosophers, in the way that they were until relatively recently, when the left, because it wanted gays to be a sort of voting bloc, encouraged them to domesticate themselves, you know, uh, get involved in the sort of bourgeois, middle-class conservative institutions like marriage. You know, it's not great being gay. You can't procreate with the person that you love. You know, if you have, if you have, I don't want to get too graphic because I know this is a this is a family show. But you know, if you if you you're making love to the person that you, that you love, you know, you can't create a child under under ordinary circumstances. You know, that's not easy for people. It's it's you know, no, you wouldn't really wish it on anybody. It's an unfortunate thing. But there are some good things about being gay, and and being gay comes with some opportunities, and being gay comes with a responsibility. I think, I guess, uh, to, um, ex to to test the limits of what is possible, to explore the limits of culture and thought, and and you know, and, and, and invention. And gays have been very good at that throughout history. My view is that that's threatened by the left's desire to domesticate uh, homosexuals, to turn them into nice, well-ordered, well-behaved, middle-class, you know, um, couples. Give them, a, give them an adopted kid and a car and a house, and get them to work and, and give them, give them gay marriage. So I don't think realistically that you can stop people from doing it, and I think it would be unkind to do that. But I just wish we wouldn't. Can I ask you um, another one? I'm not a Christian myself, but uh, Christianity mm. is is normally posited as a, um, uh, a faith that's anti-gay. I mean, we have the uh, gay and yes. lesbian Mardi Gras every year in Sydney, and it wouldn't, uh, a year wouldn't go by when there's not a float mocking Christianity or the si Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence ma running up and down the street. Uh, <laughs> is that your view as well? Is Christianity uh, an anti-gay faith? Christianity is not an anti-gay faith, certainly not in the way that Islam is, although, of course, it's perfectly acceptable to say that one is, and nobody will dare say that the other is. Uh, I quite like the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, to be completely honest and clear, because they're so funny and bitchy and clever and waspish. That's the gay culture I like, and that's dying. There's not enough of that about. I just wish that they would pick better targets, because, frankly, a nice Christian couple who don't want to bake a wedding cake for some lesbians seems to me to be a far weaker and easier sort of low-hanging fruit target for comedy than jihadis, who are intrinsically hilarious. The clothes that the women wear are funny. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but the burqa is funny. You know, many of the things that Muslims do are funny. Many of the things that, you know, that ISIS is up to, the sort of homoeroticism of them all, you know, on a, on a, on a hill in Raqqa with, their, the, with the guns out and, you know, and, and firearms. Uh, you know, it, there's something funny about all of that, but no gay people are brave enough to address the subject. Well, I try to because I think it's funny. And I think, you know, sometimes when horrific things happen, and humor is the only way really to deal with that. Uh, as far as the supposed incompatibility between Christianity and uh, gays, all I can really guess at is that the gay people who say this don't know many Christians or had bad parents because, just speaking historically, there was a time in Ireland, in the UK, and probably in every, every uh, country with a sizable pro pro proportion of Catholics, when being gay was against the law, when the government would even chemically castrate you in the case of, uh, of Turing in, in, in England. Who, what was the one institution the that would take gay people in? Ask them not to practice because they, you know, didn't agree with the, uh, the, the, the they, because they disagreed with the sin, but they loved the sinner. That was the Catholic Church and the clergy. Now, uh, to my mind, I mean, in my experience, Christians and in particular Catholics, which is the, you know, how I, how I was raised, in particular Catholics have nothing but sympathy, compassion, respect, and understanding for people who are struggling, as they see it, with sin. That's quite a different approach to homosexuality to the one from Islam, which it seems to me to, to be more readily uh, about throwing people off roofs and uh, mowing down gay clubs in Florida than saying, you know what, I'd rather not bake a wedding cake or I'd rather not send pizzas to your wedding. Christianity, I think, at least in the last couple of hundred years, and certainly in any of the lifetimes of anybody alive watching this program, is characterized best by compassion, understanding, and uh, sympathy. Islam, I think, if you want to talk about a religion that is profoundly antithetical and hostile to homosexuality, I think is better characterized in the life, uh, lifetimes of everybody watching this program as hateful, violent, homophobic, uh, and, and, and a horror everywhere it appears. Uh, now, some viewers are going to find that a very strong statement, but I'll just leave you with a couple of statistics to think about. 100% of British Muslims polled by Gallup they did 1,001 Muslims, and this is just a couple of years ago, and this is not Muslims in Syria or Raqqa, you know, this is not Muslims anywhere in the Middle East, this is British Muslims. 
100% of them believe that homosexuality is an unacceptable lifestyle choice. Imagine what the percentage is for uh, Catholics or for Christians. Don't think it's 100. And 52% mm. of those Muslims believe that homosexuality, that homosexual sex rather, should be made illegal. That I should go to prison for my love life. Now, these are, these are statistics you will not find anywhere in the Christian world. And so if I speak occasionally strongly about Islam, I simply encourage people to return to the numbers, look at the data, and when you see... Uh, as I do, and laugh as I do, at the absurdity in gay pride parades of queers for Palestine, and consider that 96% of Palestinians believe that homosexuality is an unacceptable lifestyle choice. Ask yourself, is it the political left or the political right that is really acting in gay people's interests? And ask yourself, if Christianity is so bad, where are the Christians murdering gays? Because I can find you a hell of a lot of Muslims doing it. Christianity has some, you know, unfortunate history in many ways as all religions do but uh, to suggest that it represents a threat to gay people living in the West is ridiculous and to ridicule it and to pick it out to single it out for um, for, for uh, you know for the sorts of demeaning humor that happens at gay pride not only ignores so much of a better target but is also simply too easy gay people are better than that you want to come to the world with ridicule and fun and mischief and whimsy and satire and waspishness you want you know do all of those things that make that make camp gay culture fantastic there's a much bigger target out there have some bravery and do it good well well very well said uh, lastly uh, hate speech uh, the of phenomena of hate speech which is an excuse to actually to crash crash uh, free speech too often too often it's used like that yes. plus of course the demonstrations yes, against yes. you it strikes me uh, Milo that um, the left has betrayed the idea of free speech now and uh, you're in, indeed a target uh, of this new puritanism mm -hmm. That's certainly true. I mean, on the, on the campuses in the 1950s and 60s, it was the radicals who were demanding free speech, the right to be offensive, the right to offend the ruling establishment. And to some degree, they were right that the establishment was conservative. That's changed. It's not the case anymore. Liberals now run and have run for decades the entertainment industry, academia, the news business, you name it. Any of the civil society institutions in America and in most countries in the West are now completely run by the left. And in order to survive and to succeed in those institutions, you have to go along with the tenets of leftism, even where they're absurd. No one, for instance, believes that Caitlyn Jenner is a woman. Nobody believes that. Nobody who's telling you that you have to say it, nobody writing the articles, none of those editors, none of the people on TV, and none of the people at home reading these articles genuinely believe that. But we're all forced to say it if we want a career in the media. That's insane. Uh, and, you know, frankly, the, uh, the assault on free speech, which is really a symptom, it's a sign of fear and weakness from the left on college campuses, in the media and elsewhere, their total inability to accept anybody with a different point of view and their desire to paint us all as bigots and hateful, and hateful uh, you know, uh, uh, spreaders of hate and bigotry. You know, this is a sign of an ideology on the run. This is a sign of somebody who is afraid of what you might say, afraid of what will happen when the public hears you. That doesn't strike me with much confidence. And what uh, has happened in, you know, I'm running a tour at the moment. The, um, I call it the Dangerous Faggot Tour, if that offends you, good. Uh, you know, that's kind of the point. Um, in American college campuses at the moment, and the extent to which the left does not want to engage in arguments, but instead simply wants to drown out, to shout, to scream, to attempt to stall these events, indicates to me that they have lost the moral high ground. They no longer have the confidence in their own arguments, and they no longer believe they will win in the open marketplace of ideas. So if you're frustrated by what the left is doing to you, if you're frustrated at being lied to and lied about by your newspapers, if you're frustrated that you have to sort of go along with things you know, you aren't, true, that you know aren't true in public life just to get ahead at work or to, you know, just to, to have an easy life, this is good news for you because it means that this is an ideology, this crazy social justice stuff is an ideology in crisis, and it is ripe for a collapse. I'm doing what I can to make that happen. <laughs> Milo, uh, you more strength to your arm. Uh, I think you're, you're, you're fabulous, if I could use uh, a term like that. But Milo, oh, uh, you, you mentioned darling. your dangerous faggot tour. Uh, <laughs> is there any danger of uh, you coming here with it? Oh, gosh. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to work out which countries I'm illegal in. I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to go back to England after some of the things I've said. I know I can't go to Scotland where the police say that <laughs> being offensive is now reason to get arrested. So, no, sorry, Scotland. You won't see me anytime soon. Pretty sure I can't go to Germany. 
or uh, whether simply even discussion of the Islamic problem is off the table. Probably not France. I don't know. I'm hoping that Australia is a bit more sensible than the rest of these countries, and I think it is. We have had some uh, invitations from Australian universities. I'm hoping for a couple more. If you, you, if you are out there and you're a student at, uh, at the college and you're a conservative and you want to uh, get a, a leg of the Dangerous Faggot Tour in Australia next year, I encourage you to get in touch with my team. And uh, I very much hope to, to be in Australia before the end of next year. Milo, I look forward to that day. Thank you so much, Milo Yiannopoulos, for talking to us today.